Let's take a look at leveraging PowerShell to query event logs on remote computers, but only for events that happen within a specific time frame. So we're going to be using the get win event commandment and to specify a time frame, we're going to use the filter hash table parameter. So I've got that example set here. And you notice after the filter hash table parameter, I have the hash table notation, uh, the at symbol and open curly. Uh, this is kind of like PowerShell splatting uh, in that uh, we just have the key value pairs here. So in this case, I'm searching the uh, system log. So we give it the log name of system. And then my start and end times, you'll notice the start time is an hour ago. So I'm using the get date commandlet to specify one hour in the past. And then the end time is right now. So if we run this commandlet, we should see only events that happened within the last hour. That's pretty sweet. And then if we want to search a remote computer, we use the computer name parameter. So you can see here, I've got that error on line 22, computer name of EX01, but everything else is the same. And so this should look at the system log on EX01, but only for the last hour again. So, but what if you wanted to search multiple locks instead of just one? Well, you could go through and type each command out one by one by one, uh, but that would get pretty old. Uh, so let me introduce you to the list log parameter of get win event. So what this will do is actually list out all of the logs on your computer. And let me demonstrate that. So what we're seeing here is a list of all the event logs that are on the computer that I'm running this command on. And so if we wanted to go through each of those logs and get all the events that happened within the last hour, we can do that with a for each loop. So I've got that set up here on lines 35. And so I'm looping through each log and for each of those using that same get win event command that we had before. Uh, but this time I'm doing it on the local computer instead of the remote one, just because it's a little faster. And there we go. We got it running off and this is going to would take a while if we would actually let it sit and run. So I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, and let me demonstrate uh, some filtering because we don't always want to search all the event logs because that can take a long time as you were saying there. So we can actually do some filtering. So I've set up some filtering here. So for instance, if we wanted to skip the security and system logs, I'm going to assign those to the skip event logs variable. And if you want to add more to this, you can with commas and I'll show you some more down below. Uh, and then I'm going to use the get win event uh, with the list log parameter here on line 49. Uh, but I'm going to pipe that to the where object commandlet. I'm going to see where that object has a record count of value. So if we look at get win event here, that list log again, uh, you'll notice there's that integer value right before the name of each of those event logs. That's actually the number of records that are inside of it. So we know if there aren't any records in that log, there's nothing to query. So we're only looking at the events that have records in them. And I'm also saying uh, where the skip event logs, that, that array does not contain the log. So we're skipping the events that we list in the skip event logs. So if we go ahead and run this little snippet and output that, those logs to search, if we scrolled through here, you, you would find that the security and system logs are not listed as an example. So let's bring this all together and actually write a script that will do this for us. So I've got this, uh, I've got the script written out as a reusable script. So what that means is I got variables on the top party at the bottom. And we're going to list out the computers that we want to query here on line 62 for the uh, computer names. And then lines 65 and 66, this is going to be the start and end times. Um, I've got it just set for the start time for an, an hour in the past and the end time for right now. You can obviously uh, set those to be something different. And then I've also set up, instead of just using the option to skip, I've also included an option to include only certain event logs. So if we wanted to search for just through the system and application log, um, this is how we do it. And then if you wanted to skip logs instead, you would add in the, the skip logs for the skip event logs variable. And then we're also outputting to a text file. So line 74, that's that path. So our for each loop here is going to loop through each of those computers. And then lines 83, just doing some right progress. So we can, we can keep track here and line 85 to 89. This is where we're actually doing our logs filtering. So 88, that line should look familiar. Uh, that same skip event logs from before. And then line 86 is if I'm using the include event logs, that's where that comes into play. And so in this case, 
Um, since I did specify some include event logs, it's going to only go through those event logs. And then finally down here, we're going to loop through this for each loop on line 94. We're going to loop through each of those logs, uh, just like we did uh, during the introduction. And then line 99, this is where the magic happens. We have our git win event uh, commandlet, and we're specifying the computer name since we're, we're running on remote computers here. And we got our filter hash table, uh, just like we had before. So if we run this script, what we should start seeing is our progresses. So you can see this, this output you see down here at the bottom, processing computers and processing logs. Uh, that's just output from the write progress commandlet. And that's just telling us where it's at. So if we give that a minute to finish up, uh, we can actually pull up. Let's see. Okay. So we, we did get one error. So no events were found that matched the specified uh, selection criteria. That just means that uh, for one of the queries, it didn't find any events. And that's okay. That's a, definitely a possibility. Uh, so now if you were to pull up the cEventLogs.txt file, you would notice that there should be uh, outputted events from that script. So that's how you query multiple computers in certain event logs for events that happened within a certain time frame using PowerShell.